Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika. In today's video, I am going to be reviewing the new Fenty Beauty Hydrating Foundation. Now, as you can see, I am super fair. I picked up the shade 120 and for reference, I have normal to combo skin. I have been wearing and testing this foundation out over the last week. So if you want to hear my thoughts and see how this foundation held up on me, also see some swatch comparisons and a demo, then keep on watching. All right, so with all my reviews, I like to start out with some facts. So this foundation comes in the same 50 shades as the matte foundation. It claims to be a long wear, hydrating foundation with a perfectly smooth and natural finish that lets skin look like skin. It also says that it looks natural and not dewy. Dewy, dewy. How do you guys say that? Now this one is targeted to more normal dry skin types, but I really wanted to test it out anyway and see how a hydrating formula performs on my skin. It also says that it has a medium to buildable coverage and it is sweat and humidity resistant. As you can see here, the packaging is quite different to the original. It comes in a squeezy tube with a pump, which is a bonus. It comes with 32 mils of product, which is a little bit more than your average foundation. And that translates to 1.08 ounces and it retails for 52 Australian dollars or 35 US dollars. So as I mentioned, I picked up the shade 120 and this is described for fair skin with neutral undertones. With the original matte formula, I picked up the shade 100, which is described for very fair skin with neutral undertones. And I found that one to be just a bit too light for me. I find that 120 is a much better match. It actually looks quite pink when you pump it out onto the palette, but once applied onto the skin, it matched really well. I find that it is quite a thick formula for a hydrating foundation. It's very different to what I expected it to be. And it does feel a little heavy at first, when you're applying it on the skin. But once blended out, it doesn't feel heavy or cakey at all. It's actually quite lightweight. I did try blending with a brush and with a sponge. I thought the sponge might take away a bit of the coverage, but it really doesn't. And so I do prefer the sponge finish as it looks a little bit more flawless. The coverage I was actually really impressed with. As I mentioned, it is described as medium buildable and I 100% agree with that. I used three pumps in total to get the coverage that I'm wearing today. I go in with one full layer all over the face and then touch up other areas where I just want a little bit more coverage. So anywhere I have some breakouts or redness, so usually around my nose and my chin area. It layered really well, feeling smooth on the skin and very breathable and lightweight again. Now you can definitely see straight up how hydrating this foundation is. It looks very glowy on the skin. It does say it's not meant to look dewy and I think on dry skin that would be the case, but on my normal to combo skin, it did look really dewy. I did set my entire face with powder and straight up it took a bit of that glow away, but within two to three hours, I could definitely see it was coming back. So how it wore, I found that because I don't have dry skin, it did look a little bit too dewy on me, therefore looking rather oily. It was mostly throughout my T-zone where I do already get a little bit oily throughout the day. I did end up blotting, but I found it didn't really do much. It's like it wasn't so much oils coming through that I needed to blot away, but just that hydrating, dewy finish of the foundation. I did go over these areas with some pressed powder as well, and it did dull it down a bit, but not completely. Also, when I was applying products over the top, I found if there were any areas I didn't 100% set with my powder, it was moving around on my face. So for example, when I was applying bronzer up on my forehead here, I mustn't have set really well up on my hairline. So when I was applying the bronzer, the foundation was moving and it was starting to look a little bit patchy. Longevity wise, it wore quite well on me. Nothing to rave about. Only a few hours into wear, places that I hadn't completely set with powder, I could see it was starting to crease a little. So besides my eyes here, when I smile and talk, I get creases and the foundation was settling into those. Also around my mouth and mustache area, it was starting to settle and crack a little bit. By the seven hour mark, it had started to fade on the bottom of my cheeks here. And by the nine hour mark, it was cracking and separating all over my chin. And these places I did heavily set with powder as well. For acclaimed long wear foundation, this doesn't really live up to my expectations, but then again, it's aimed towards dry skin. 
and I don't have dry skin. So if you do, it will probably last longer on you. I did go ahead and apply a mattifying primer to test it out and see if that would keep the oily look at bay, but it didn't really do much. I still got a lot of shininess throughout my nose area here. One little combo that I found worked a lot better was mixing it with the original matte foundation. Now I find the matte foundation to be a bit too drying, so mixing it with the hydrating just seemed to be that perfect combination for my skin. It gave me really good coverage, it had a beautiful satin matte finish, and it lasted really well too. I still got a little shiny throughout my nose, but everywhere else it looked absolutely flawless. Overall, if I only got a sample of this foundation and did a sample test, I wouldn't go ahead and buy the full size bottle. From the start, I knew it wasn't really catered towards my skin type, but I wanted to try it out anyway. Now that I have it, I would only wear this if I was going somewhere for shorter periods of time or I will use it to mix foundations. I think the coverage is great. It was really comfortable on the skin and at first it looked really natural on my normal to combo skin type. On me, it wasn't very long lasting and I don't think it would hold up through sweat or humidity. It just moved around a bit too much and I don't think that would hold up in these hot Queensland conditions. Mm -hmm. If you have my skin type or oily skin, I wouldn't bother picking this one up, but if you have normal to dry skin, I think it's worth giving a go. As I said, it does look really beautiful on the skin, and if you have dry skin, I don't think you would experience the problems that I had. All right, well, let's jump into some swatch comparisons, and then I'll give you some close-ups of what the foundation looks like. Okay, so first up we have the Fenty Hydrating Foundation in 120. Here is the Fenty Matte Foundation in 100. Here we have the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation in 0.5N Porcelain. Here we have the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation in Light Porcelain. And last we have the MAC Studio Fix Foundation in NC10. So as you can see, out of all these foundations, it looks the least neutral, but it still kind of works. It's a bit loud out here, but this is what the foundation looks like in natural lighting. All right, guys, well, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know if you're going to try this foundation out or not. There are so many new foundation releases at the moment. My next one will be the Makeup Revolution Hydrating Foundation, so we'll see how that goes and whether or not it's going to suit my skin type. I also picked up a sample of the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, and I want to get my hands on a sample of the new Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation as well. Let me know if there's any other foundations you would like me to test out too. If you aren't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and also come follow me over on Instagram. I will have my Instagram linked down below. If you want more foundation reviews for fair skin, I have a whole playlist, so I'll have that in the description box. All right, well, I hope you're all having a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.